What would you do if you could do anything without the limits of time or money? I truly believe that everyone has an answer to this question and a way to make it happen. And that includes you. Answering this question will take you on an unexpected journey. It could be as extravagant as a helicopter ride over the pyramids of Giza, or as simple as volunteering to plant trees for your local community. Allowing yourself to dream the impossible opens the door to possibility. Because having a dream is to have hope. What would you do if you could do anything? This is the question that led me to leave everything behind to dance around the world. I was living in Bangkok, Thailand, working in my dream job at the United Nations where I was researching happiness. And as an expat, I could afford to get massages on my lunch break. I would whiz from one rooftop bar to the next while side-saddling the back of a motorbike in a cocktail dress, and then return home to my 23rd floor apartment overlooking the city's glittering skyline. I had everything, if not more, than what I could have imagined possible. I had achieved my dream, only to realize that it wasn't my dream anymore. I wasn't happy. I was consumed by grief, heartbreak, and burnout following the loss of three people dear to my heart in just six months. My boss and mentor had disappeared, the love of my life had ghosted me, and my grandfather, my father figure, had died. My throat was tight, my chest was heavy, my stomach was in knots. Sometimes my eyes would just well up with tears that would stream down my cheeks without warning. I would drag myself into work every day and hunched over my computer, try to keep up with my daily inbox of over 300 emails. I started to realize that I was becoming allergic to office life. It was disconnecting me from the very purpose and mission of my life and work. I had spent years doing, achieving, producing, and now I wanted to be, to feel, and to live. In the depths of my sadness, I had nothing to lose. I was seeking answers. So I turned to my friend Naoko and asked, what would you do if you could do anything without the limit of time or money? I would swim with whales in Papua New Guinea, she said. What about you? My mind drew a blank. As a happiness researcher, I studied happiness, I wrote about happiness, and I talked about happiness. And yet, I wasn't happy, and I didn't know the answer. I wanted to truly embody happiness, the theories, the concepts and philosophies that I had so carefully studied. I wanted to walk the talk, or better yet, dance it. Rather than condense happiness into PowerPoints and reports, I wanted to actually be happiness. So I closed my eyes and listened to my heart. I wanted to liberate my body from my desk. Where would I be? Who would I be with? What would I be doing? And how? What would light up that flame inside of me? What would set my soul on fire? It started to come to me. I would be outside, in the streets, and speaking Spanish, a language that I'd learned as a teenager. I'd be surrounded by joy and laughter and moving my body with a sense of freedom that tells you what it means to be alive. I know, I replied to Naoko. I would quit my job and learn to dance. I started to imagine myself swaying to bachata on the beaches of the Dominican Republic, strutting to samba and the Rio Carnival Parade, and spinning to salsa on the rooftops of Havana. 
This all would have seemed impossible to me. And yet suddenly, it was possible. By allowing myself to remove the limits of time and money, I allowed myself to dream in a way that I never had before. I was able to see what would truly bring me joy and what a version of my future could look like if I chose to pursue it. With a clear dream in my heart, I had taken the first step. The next step was to figure out how. So much was at stake. I had spent several years working towards my career at the UN in the hope to contribute towards a happier and more peaceful world. I was risking losing everything, and I was afraid. Afraid that I would never be employed again. Afraid that I would end up penniless, or worse yet, homeless. Afraid that I would be judged for not taking my career or life seriously. But it dawned on me that everything in life is a choice. I would always have the choice to return to my old life just as much as I had the choice to step into my new one. Now, we can't just remove the obstacles of time and money overnight. But I do believe that there's a way to make any dream come true, even if it's an adapted version of it. I didn't have an unlimited supply of travel money or a trust fund, but I wasn't going to let that be a reason to shut down my dream altogether. I tried to make it work. I started researching the cost of living and flights in different countries to see how much I actually needed to make this happen. I started to make a plan and save. My dream was infinite, and yet it was possible. Nine months later, I had packed up my life, and I was boarding a flight to JFK. I'd planned for my journey to take me to eight countries, learning eight dances in eight months. I would start in New York, the birthplace of salsa, followed by Mexico, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Brazil, and Argentina. But things don't always work out exactly as planned. And I ended up learning 18 dances, not to mention a few more that I dabbled with spontaneously on the dance floor. Each dance told me a story of its people and its country bringing me a new perspective on happiness and on life. In New York, I learned about the theory of grit by Angela Duckworth, which finds the key to success as the combination of passion and perseverance. Surrounded by dancers of semi-professional level and above, I'd signed up to a six-hour diva boot camp, matched with equal hours of practice for me to keep up. As people started to drop out from the challenging choreography in the boot camp, I persevered, fueled by passion. I performed on stage in front of 1,000 people, New York's prime salsa scene, wearing nothing more than a skimpy bodysuit and fishnet stockings. I understood what it meant to truly have grit. In Cali, Colombia, I ventured out to a school in an underprivileged neighborhood to learn salsa caleña, a style known for its powerful kicks and shuffles. The school's mission statement was based on a theory by Harvard professor Howard Gardner that people can have multiple forms of intelligence. Dance uses them all. It improves visual spatial awareness as much as it does logic, musicality, and interpersonal skills, to name just a few. With them, I learned that dance is so much more than an art form. It's a powerful tool for human potential that will prepare you for life. In Buenos Aires, tango taught me about transcendence, one of the pillars of positive psychology that encompasses character strengths, such as the appreciation of beauty and excellence and spirituality. With every glide, pivot, and turn, time stopped. I felt both elevated and grounded at the same time. The beauty of tango is there are three in the dance. The leader, the follower, and an invisible axis that guides their movements. I understood what it meant to be deeply connected to myself, others, and the world. 
My journey was humbling, enabling me to map out history with my feet. So many of the dances I learned were born from pain and suffering, influenced by slavery, immigration, poverty, and deep social injustice. Today, those dances represent joy and celebration, where every moment is cherished and lived because you don't know if it might be the last. The people I met taught me that happiness is possible with just your body, a playlist, and your friends. Through music and movement, communities gather in laughter and in love, bringing a sense of lightness to a society that has become so serious. We are so bogged down in our day to day that we forget to open our eyes to the world around us. My journey taught me something different about happiness through every person, dance, and place that I came across. Here are the three main lessons. First, human connection is the most precious resource we have. In a world where we spend more time looking at our screens than at each other, dance brings us together to hold our gaze and our hands, sharing our balance and our breath for the time of a song. It allows us to develop empathy, tolerance, and acceptance of people from all walks of life as we invite them into a sheltered embrace. Second, life is meant to be lived with meaning and purpose. When we engage with the world around us, we find beauty in each moment. But society has encouraged us to pursue more traditional forms of success, chasing money and power, or the idea that our worth is inevitably tied to our job title, status, or salary. What I found was a new definition of success, one in which I live a meaningful and fulfilling life with a clear sense of purpose. Because in the end, you will only remember those moments in which you truly lived in this one precious life that we have. Third, we are only truly alive when we are the most authentic version of ourselves. Authentic self-expression has become a rarity as we strive to be loved and accepted by others. But rather than leaping onto the latest trend or playing a certain role, why don't we stop to ask ourselves, what is it that makes us who we truly are? What are our values? What are our strengths? And how do we choose the people, places, and situations that align with them? Through dance, I learned to express myself fully and freely, moving my body in front of others without a care for what they might think of me. The more I danced, the more I shed my complexes, my fear of judgment, my need to conform to societal expectations, and the desire to be anybody else but me. My dance journey around the world took me on a journey to myself. And my invitation to you is, ask yourself, what would you do if you could do anything? And then take that first step.